What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Real Bodybuilding Podcast. This is number 115, I believe, and I'm here with Mr. Johnny Shreve. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. All right, so we're not going to keep people in suspense. I want to get to some other things, but I just want to tell people why you're so drained. Tell people what, what's going on. So I decided this year I was going to uh, drop down to 212 and uh, do what I probably should have did from the start, but I was, you know, too thick-headed. Yeah. But yeah, so um, yeah, I think it was like 250 when I started and 220 this morning. So for people that don't know you, Johnny, Johnny's an IFBB pro. You were an open class. What's the most you ever weighed on stage before this show? Uh, 232 was my last time on stage. So you were appealed dry 232 on stage. Yeah. So you've decided to drop 20 pounds of muscle. <laughs> <laughs> but let's, let's, let's be, let's set the, the, let's set the actual like timeline. So when was that 232 and when was the last time you competed as an open pro? California pro was it 2019. Okay. So, yeah. and then you took some time off. You were still training, but were you training like still training. bodybuilding? No, I'm not quite. Like, I mean, yes and no, but not as focused and not as, you know, eating as much. And, the uh, you know, gear use wasn't as much either. Yeah. So, so I was on my way to kind of going down anyway. What were, why did you take so much time off? Did you, were you thinking about retirement or were you just not? With the current situation and all that, I just, you know, it was just, it seemed impossible to do anything. I mean, like, even now I have to get my, I'm double vaccinated and then I have to get a negative test to travel. Mm. And that's just recently. So before that, if you didn't have your test or if you didn't have a shot, you couldn't go anywhere. And Nova Scotia, we've been on lockdown up until I would say a month and a half ago. And we yeah. could even like go to different provinces. Yeah. We're like that too. So, yeah. So I was like, I'm not going to, there's no point in trying to go through a prep with all that extra stress on it. And then realizing that almost the same thing this year anyway, but yeah. So your time yeah. off, your time off wasn't like a choice. It was almost forced. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you, had there not, had there not been COVID, would you have continued to try and grow and get bigger and be more like stay in the open class? Um, no, I may. So my daughter changed a lot of that. So as soon as I, you know, she's, she's been here, like, you know, my last time I competed, she was, she was just a little bit under one and she went to the Toronto pro and then now she's, you know, three next week. And the more I'm around her, the more I'm just like, hmm. do I want to keep going and pushing my body to those limits, you know, still, um, you know, cool as anybody does. I just didn't, I just didn't feel like I wanted to anymore. Yeah, And then I was just like, but I want to compete because I'm like, I love competing. So my idea was to basically still be open, but do it, you know, with even less, um, you know, gear and whatnot. And then I got the idea from Greg. He's like, why don't you just go down to 212 and then hardly take anything. How tall are you? Five, seven and a bit. Oh, so you're still, you're still going to look big as a 212. Like, cause I always worry with 212 that, you know, some of those guys are like five, five. Five six, yeah. five, five four. So I worry. I thought you were more like five eight, five nine. So I'm like, no. When I played football, I was five nine. But no. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so COVID kind of changed everything. And I, you know, I've noticed. I've talked to a couple other guys on the podcast that when they took a break, and you said you got to spend time with your daughter and stuff, it kind of started to change their mind a bit. So it was staying away from the sport and seeing, you know, living a normal life for a little while that kind of like got you away from it made it harder to get back in that I mean, yeah, that and then my youtube channel has been doing very well yeah and uh and it's been showing you know direct correlation with how good my online my business is doing so that like you know i have like i have staff that i work with now that you know that i hired and you know, editors and whatnot so you know being able to do that and then seeing the financial return from that Mm -hmm. and being able to do still what I love to do without having to compete. It was kind of like, you know, you kind of look at, you look at both worlds, like what's, yeah. you know, what way, what way is the other, I can still do what I want to do with my daughter and family and not go through all of this yeah. and make a great living. Or 
I can go through this and not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder. So it's kind of like competing was really just a source of income, but now you're making the income and you're able to train anyway. So why not? Right. Like, yeah. Why? I mean, it's yeah. But that brings sure, me back, ahead. but that brings me back to now. So why then jump into the show? If you're doing well, YouTube channel is good. Money is good. Why put yourself through all, through all this, especially having to drop muscle, which is probably even harder than regular diet. I'm an, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, honestly, like I, I'm a competitor. I'm an athlete first and foremost. So I, I, in my head, I've always wanted to, you know, I would say when I made it to Olympia, then I'll call it, you know, if I ever made it there and, yeah. you know, as an open competitor, I'm like, yeah, it's probably not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, not without, you know, more time and, more everything and then you know this class gave me the ability to still be more competitive yeah um and more realistic as a goal and you know so i i i really just i wanted like i got the itch like literally i was like i want to compete again i want to like i just don't i didn't i didn't feel like i went out at my best um uh, my last show and you know this like even if this is my last show i ever did i can say for sure i brought my absolute best um, hands down and you know and I'd be fine with that but I just wasn't okay with having my last show being that you know ninth place knowing that my goal was to each year you know I was like ninth place this year next year hopefully I can crack top five year after that maybe top three after that maybe make a look yeah so it was a long it was a it was a you know uh it was a planned out you know progression that I had in mind that when COVID happened I was like well yeah it sucks so so yeah. what, what do you think your weight was when you kind of started training for this because your weight i'm assuming you've probably lost a little bit of muscle in that year that you took off because of covid i was i was my body fat percent of stayed around 15 or i like look at like the first time i you know when i did that when i was gonna pee not last i did my body fat at the beginning of prep and it was 15 percent, and i was 260 okay and then I did my body fat this year again. I was 15% and I was 250. Okay. So I did lose it quite a bit. But then again, like, I also hold a F ton of water. So, like, my yeah. body never really gives me the right, you know, the accurate reflection of what I'm actually, what I look like. Like, even right now, like, it's just like a head death to me. Cause I was like, what's the, you know what? What, what body, what's your body fat percentage now? Right now, it's eight, but probably like, to Greg's eye, probably around like six. How do you measure? How do you measure your body fat? What do you? How are you? Cal- pres- calipers, and they're not accurate. Eight seems high to me because you should. It's very, like, yeah, I'm looking at some of your photos that you post on Instagram, and eight seems like it's too high. It's extremely high. It's not. It's not accurate because like, like if you're just taking the millimeters between yeah. your pinching skin, and if you're someone who holds a lot of water, yeah, you know you're gonna you're gonna it's gonna it's gonna be skewed no matter what, and then it's also gonna be on like based on an equation and then you know if you're if you're not in a you know if i was 28 instead of 38 yeah then my body fat drops even more so like it's just it's just for me it's just a number i, I kind of gauge yeah and as long as that number is going down each week you know we're, we're tracking every week as long as that number is going down it doesn't really matter what the number is as long as you know yeah. it reflects my weight and my look when you say we is it is greg coaching you or is he just your eye that helps he just and I, I've been doing this whole prep my, my entire self. Um, I just go there to get, uh, I, we, I, it was a, it was a joke. It was a running joke to start. Cause my last show I was going to do, I was like, he's like, if you get leaner than me, then you should be able to place top five. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I started, I'm like, you know, I'll do a series called become leaner than Greg just said. Yeah. And then it became like the thing. So we, and then, you know, COVID happened, the situation happened. Yeah. And, um, we kept, I did, we did a whole prep. So we did like 13 weeks and had like a pose down at the end and I, you know, finished it. And then this year I was like, well, um, let's do it again. Why not? Wait a minute. Did, and you, was, did you get leaner than Greg? This year? Yes. No, last time you didn't? No, no, <laughs> no. Well, why not? Because it was, honestly, it, was, it did motivate. It was there, but I was just like, I'm like, I'm not going on stage. I'm not trying to be as lean as this guy right now. Like <laughs> not even close. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, but this year, this year for sure, hundred percent, like, like a couple, three weeks, three, four weeks ago. Let me. I, I want to show people real quick. We'll we'll come back to this in a second. I just want to show people. So 
This is Johnny Shreve's Instagram page. If you don't follow him, it's under, if you're listening on audio, it's underscore J O N N I S H R E V E underscore Johnny Shreve. These are some of your photos, but I want to take you to YouTube. This is his YouTube channel. Um, the JSN Johnny Shreve network. That's pretty cool. (laughs) But I noticed, um, where is it? Am I leaner than Greg? So do you guys actually, (laughs) do you guys actually pose down in this video? No, but like he, no. Oh, he, he gets up here. He gets up here and there. Let's see. But he, uh, oh, he's doing your calipers here. Take a look. You look good, man. Very balanced. Yeah, it's a. Uh, Are you happy with the fun. way you look? I am. I'm like. I'm more. I like honestly in hindsight now, and it's kind of annoying. I, I probably should have made this move a while ago. <laughs> I, I think you look better as a two twelve. Yeah. Like, because it makes everything look more proportionate. Yeah. Yeah, this has come together then, really well. Yeah. And I'm not like, and I'm not super tall either. I'm shorter than I look, or I guess. No, that's I mean, true. like Zane, like me and Zane are the same. I was talking to Zane yesterday. Yeah. And last time me and Zane competed against each other was Nationals, and he went right to 212. And we're like, he might be a, a, maybe a centimeter taller than me. Dude, the lighting's not good in this video, and you still look lean as hell. Like, I just, like, it looks dark. Like, I can't tell exactly how shredded you are, but I can still tell everything's there. This was, yeah. this, this is 10 days out. Yeah. That's about, uh, um, I think it was 225. So how are you yeah. going <laughs> to, what are you going to do, sit in a sauna for 10 pounds? Oh, I mean, I, I lose 10 pounds every prep. At the end, you mean? Oh, my God, yeah. As soon as I put a diuretic in me, I'm, I'm down 10 pounds. But why Why do you do that, though? You know more. You don't seem, you seem like you'd know more than that, no? What, to, uh, what, to lose water? Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you, why, why wouldn't you get yourself kind of ready so you don't have to do that? Well, I, I do. This is my, this is my, own, my own curiosity. I mean, like, so this, I know my body. So like, I know like, so like right now, if you ran, I can run my finger down my shins. Yeah. And you'll see like it'll indent water. And that'll start at the beginning of prep for the entire time. Cause I'm just, I got no freaking kidney issues. I'm like that. And I don't worry about that. But it's just, it's from, I'm an, I'm an athlete. So like my body's used to always, you know, I'm doing stairs, stepper all the time. I'm always plantar flex. Yeah. So I'm always holding a lot more water. So even if I like, like I said, like I can even, even my body fat percentage doesn't reflect my, what I'm actually on because I'm always pinching way more because I have more water sitting in me. So I'm leaner than I actually am. Like when you look yeah. at me, yeah. Then and and it's it's night and day difference. So every time I if I took like one dive, I lose like ten pounds. Yeah, yeah. So you're doing so you're getting ready for Tampa Bay. Yeah. Who is? Have you seen the competitor list? Is there anybody in the show that you're kind of aiming for? Or are you just trying to aim for a top five, top three? What's your goal? I want to win. I'm not doing this to freaking. Oh, I don't. I'm, just... <laughs> I'm not suffering my ass off this to go and. I mean, I I would expect everyone that's going to want to go there and win, but like I know, like I know Aaron Clark. Um, we're good buddies. I know he's competing. He did, he came top five last year. Yeah. Um, I know a couple guys like I don't, but I I honestly haven't looked yeah i i kind of know now it's just like it doesn't really matter who's there like it just it, the judges are going to pick who they want to pick yeah that's true i'm just curious just because it's kind of a game i think a lot of people play is who's going to be there what are they going to look like you know trying to just kind of hedge their bets to see kind of where they fit yeah but i mean like i i only have i th- i only have like aaron clark to kind of measure myself up to in a sense because i just know him yeah yeah and i know how hard he works and i know what he's been able to bring before and i know he's placed top five at that same show so you know i know i'll be as lean probably not leaner than him and i know that i'll be bigger yeah. i'll probably be the bigger bigger in the class and the leaner in the class so the most important question i want to ask you the reason i want to have you on is because i'm semi-retired fully retired whatever you want to call it i'm kind of dropping weight now so how did you drop that weight and still look good because usually when guys get to like 235 like you said on stage and then try and come back down 20 pounds usually get a stringier look and as i can see by the video i just looked at you don't look stringy at all like you look like you're supposed to be that weight 
So now, I, how did um, you manage to bring the weight down and still look great? Um, honestly, I think overall, um, my gear use has been, I, it, when I did a hundred milligrams of test every five days, that's the only test I did. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. And I was, and I was playing around with those numbers, um, for, so that's basically what I got the idea from was when I was, um, during the first lockdown, I was like, well, I'm going to skid around 150. I'm going to do like a TRT dose yeah. and just run that and see how things go. And then I found my body was responding a lot better to it, the lower dose. I think I think your body has a better response if it's not being like oversaturated. Yeah, yeah. I and I think that. being in the in the bigger classes, like we get oversaturated, and then you're you know, and then when you you basically dice it out, then your body is like relying on a lot more. Where I've had a full, I would say year and a half of running 100, 150, 100 mil, uh, milligrams. Mm-hmm. So that went down, and then my diet reflected that as well too. So I wasn't eating. A lot more like I was, you know, I was eating a lot more food. I was training a lot more athletically. I was doing a lot more mobility. I was my whole my before all this, I was trying to get myself back to be able to do a little bit less again. So I wanted to be able to do front rack, front squats, hand cleans. Yeah. And I knew I needed mobility for that. So I was training um like that to, you know, to be able to have that mobility still. I think that's what kind of equated to me, you know, to keep my overall athletic look. Yeah. And whatnot. But yeah, I mean it, that was i think that was my secret just like running low gear it sounds to me like the secret is more the time though because yes. because yeah. sometimes i think guys will rush like the times i've seen i can't think of exactly who i'm thinking about right now but i know i've seen it before where guys are like i'm going to do 212 and they try and do it in like three months and yeah. it just it just doesn't look right it looks like the muscle stringy or droopy it doesn't look like they're supposed to be that way but you you've done this over like a year and a half now yeah, like, and I and I I did I did hire um, P tour, and I was gonna, and I was, and that, again it was with the same mindset that I was gonna do less anyway. Yeah. Um, and then I was just, and then at that point, I'm like, you know what, this is just ridiculous. There's, it's just too much going on. I can't, you know, gyms are closing left and right. You know, I yeah. can't travel anywhere. There's no point in me doing all this and go through this stress. So, I just continued on my own. Then, like, even this with the stuff that we were doing, I was like. I'm going to not do any of this either. And then, you know, just go back and then like, like yeah, time is the, the overall time that your body getting used to it. Yeah. Is, is the, uh, is like, definitely key. Yeah. Um, where do you find the time? Cause I know you have a daughter and you're running the YouTube channel now is like every day. I think you're putting out videos. Yeah. So, and now you're prepping. How is the prep affecting your video production, your fatherhood? A lot. A lot. That's the biggest, the biggest thing, the biggest downfall of this whole thing is, is that is honestly like, um, as much as I love competing, um, it's taking away from my daughter's time, family time, my channel, which makes me is, which is, you know, I got, you know, I had two, ed- two full-time editors and I got one part-time staff, no, one full-time and two part-time staff. Yeah. So if like they help me a lot with stuff, but you know, this is taken away from me and I, and it, it really eats me up. Like, yeah. like I'm, I'm dead tired. And she's like, daddy, let's do whatever. Let's go for a walk. And I'm just like, man, I'm in my head. I'm jumping up right now. You, I'm taking so long to get off this couch. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm really trying to, you know, like I said, I'm not, I'm not in a rush to have this done, but I'm definitely, I can't wait to be back to, you know, the normal day life her birthday is next week monday yeah yeah so that kind of leads me to my next question which is after the show if you win is the olympia kind of like your swan song you walk on you do the olympia that's your goal and you retire or is there more after that now because you've got this newfound class that you found oh man it's it's i guess like may like if i win like i say let's say you know i win the show Mm. and go olympia 100% 100% because that's something you know I'm not like you never do like yeah that's something you take advantage of 100% like yeah. you know my and my family they understand you know it's not like they're um you know not have a selfish wife and yeah you know you know so they under they get this you know they're very supportive and then she'll understand too it's like you know going to, I, I never got to go to the Super Bowl yeah. so that's Super Bowl for me as opposed to you know after that we have to see if I want to Cause again, like it's, it's, it's all, it's the progression of like how my channel is doing. Like it's mm-hmm. when that thing keeps going up, like yourself and your channel, it's like, 
can you justify taking a pay cut? Yeah. No, I know. Basically. Yeah. And I, and I've thought that and, and you know, people, you know, people say to me like, Oh, you should get back on stage and that. And I, I've always told people, if you chase two rabbits, you're going to lose one of them. Yeah. And yeah. I, I can't, I, I can't put a hundred percent into two things. No. So I feel like if I compete, then my channel is going to suffer, which I really have a passion for the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like if, you know, and then if I do the podcast full time, I can't compete. So it's like, it's just a choice I'm making. So, and I understand exactly yeah. kind of where you're at. And that's why, yeah. that's why I, I mean, asked the question. Cause it just, there's so much, only so much time in the day. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, for the, you know, you say you, the winning is what between one to $5,000. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know for two twelve, but yeah. That's, that's, that's two twelve. That's the, that's yeah. the purse. Five, 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 two, then one. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> uh do i you know in the olympia you know that's a better you know purse but at the same time it's that's that's you're, you're doing that for the you know for the uh legacy is there any that is. is there any desire to get back to because me and you had a conversation a long time ago about sponsorships because things have changed for a little while and people weren't giving out sponsorships as much and is there any desire to go back to that model where you're like, you know what, I'm going to compete and I'm going to have a sponsor and that's going to pay some bills, but I'm also going to do the channel, but everything's kind of measured out instead of focusing on the channel and not, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I mean, like I've thought like, you know, you know, you probably already know Greg's came out his, his line and we've already talked and whatnot. I've held off for, you know, his, for his brand because I, I know and I trust it and I've, yeah. you know, been, through this, you know, from the beginning, and I know exactly what's going into it. Yeah, and I, and I know exactly how, how it's going to work too. Um, but it will be something I'm like solely relying on. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, it, it's you know, eventually I want to have my own, you know, my own name on on a brand. Yeah. You know, I was already thinking about like down the road, kind of my own pre workout only kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to, to to go back to the you know, rely, I, you know, I did the sponsor thing for seven years with one company and it's like, yeah, it's good. But it's like, once thing about being a sponsor, it's like at any time yeah, that sponsorship's gonzo. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you know, I'm, I'm happy now where I'm at, where I don't have to rely on sponsor, to be honest, we can go to the show, which is great. Yeah. And that gives me a lot more freedom to do whatever heck I want, you know, have what I want, do what I want, mm -hmm. make my own decisions. And, you know, but to go back to that life and, you know, after, you know, you got to post six times a week and then do this and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Um, I want to touch on a couple of the X's and O's real quick before we move on to something else, because some people on the channel have told me that I don't cover the X's, O's, X's and O's. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to touch on it a little bit uh, to drop 10 pounds of muscle or more. What does that diet look like? What, what calories, macros, where are you at? summer in summer um i start off at 3000 drop down to 2700 calories those are 2700 calories until um last week and they dropped down to 21 that's not that bad so for, no aren't that bad but then i'm doing two hours of cardio at the last four weeks that was my next question is how much are you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so cardio is at 45 minutes to start yeah and then at uh at eight weeks it goes to an hour six weeks i do an hour and a half no matter what then Four weeks out, I did two hours. I just, I, for me, it's like that's the one thing that I can control for sure. That's going to burn fat yeah. no matter what, and yeah. I don't got a problem doing cardio. So. so you're not you're not an anti cardio guy because those guys <laughs> those guys are out there like oh I did my whole prep I only did thirty minutes of cardio a day and I'm like, Fuck yeah. that. like that's not me yeah. I, I'm a cardio guy too so no I'll do cardio and I like I like man I like I don't fucking weird I love doing cardio and I like taking a shower after and seeing all the dirt come off. I don't know. It's something how dirty are you getting? Is. How dirty are you dirty, getting? Just, I mean, like I come out half white after. <laughs> I shower. Oh, before, I shower before my cardio, so I don't have a lot of dirt that comes off after. I shower before and after. I get. I get I just, and it's like I wash all the work off. I'm like, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's that's two hours of cardio right there for you. So 20, oh, yeah. 2,100 yeah. calories the lowest, which is not bad, but when you include the two hours of cardio, then that really sucks. Fucking terrible. Um. What about training? Are you training six days a week, five days a week? What do you do? Uh, six, day, six days a week, I was doing your regular 
you know, I push pull legs. I got my own, I got an ebook coming out. So I'm doing, a, I was doing my own plan, still it out into that, you know, getting both of my body parts in twice a week. Um, my, you know, my first push day would be a heavier push day. My second push day would be more of a shoulder, um, shoulder and, uh, and chest. My first pull day, a lot more, you know, um, rows. rows yeah. And then my second pull, a lot more vertical pulls. Yeah. And my legs is split up between hamstrings and and, uh, and quads. And yeah. I like that. I like that setup. Yeah. yeah. So you get a little bit of everything that way in the week. Um, yeah. As far as your macros go, are you uh, high carb, low fat? Are you higher fat, lower carb? Where are you that way? Um, like I'm just a, I'm a, I'm a calories in calories out guy, but when I, but I do make sure that I, I have a good amount of fat in my diet. Yeah. Just cause you know, just from a mental health standpoint, you know, and then being, you know, place where you're in a deficit, you want to keep those hormones pretty high there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I didn't really, I didn't really cut my carb carbs out until probably last week. Okay. So my carbs are pretty, I don't, I, I couldn't tell exactly how many carbs I was having. I would say the majority of my diet was fat and protein. Really? I guess if yeah. you're, I guess if you're trying to cut muscle too, I mean, not that I think it would be easier that way. No. Yeah. I mean, like if it's like you can definitely sustain more energy longer Yeah. and, and be more depleted yeah. than being, you know, than having high carbs all the time. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. again, like even my carb intake, like, you know, wasn't that like to be honest, wasn't that much to be honest. Yeah. It's mostly protein and fat. Are you going to carb load before the show? 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I don't know because oh, some, no, guy, some guys might want to go in like some guys might want to go in that flat, crisp look. So that's why I'm going to. It doesn't take well, since I'm like, you know, like I haven't like I haven't had that much carbs. So, like, you know, when I do carb load, it won't be it won't be like extravagant at all. It'll be yeah. like very, very low, um, very fast sugar. Um, I'll probably junk load because that does better with my stomach than anything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Is your family going to the show? No. You going by yourself? No, yeah. Is Greg going yeah. with you? They can't. No, Greg can't travel. Oh, that's right. So you going to the show by yourself? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I'll meet my my best friend uh, lives in Atlanta now, so he's gonna meet me down there. He's my best man. He's gonna we're gonna document the whole week. Yeah. And he happens to be a videographer, so we're gonna meet up tomorrow. Uh, you're staying with me we're gonna you know we're gonna film and stuff and then you know i do i don't know man I'm like i'm not a loner i just you know if i get down there and 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 i, I feel like i don't want to bug people you know what i mean yeah. like yeah like i messaged ian you know if i said i was like yeah if you're you know let me know what gym you're going to he told me which gym i should go to yeah and i looked at the gym up and i'm like what fucking gym are you telling me to go to it literally was like booty best booty gym in the in the in the, in the state i'm like what are you? i'm scrolling through i'm like what gym is this like all yeah. i can see is bikini girls but apparently it's like apparently it's like a really nice gym it's got a bunch of good equipment and stuff so i'm gonna head out there but yeah like, like you know i don't want to you know i don't know people are people you know want to be in their own you yeah. know they don't want to be in the way of anybody or they don't you know they get in that you know mindset they don't want to get bugged i always like I to go myself I always like to go with somebody to a show, whether it be my wife or like a best friend, just to, you know, I don't know about you. Everybody's different, but I used to get in my own head pre-contest and I would just, <laughs> like, but for the last few days for a show, I'd start to overthink things. Yeah. So it was always good for me to have somebody there to kind of bounce ideas off of and just kind of vent. So yeah. I don't know. Um, I want to touch on your channel really quickly. Do you enjoy, yeah. I noticed you do a lot of like critiques of other people's stuff and, that's a lot of what you do, but I know you do other stuff too, but do you enjoy this kind of like one of the, one of the, some of the cooler videos I like that I, that you've done are, where's the one I saw you do um, critiquing Reagan's training and then critique this one here, critiquing Reagan yeah. shoulder destruction. And then you got critiquing four time Mr. Olympia. And I'm like, is that, yeah. do you like that? Like, is that. I do. It, yeah. it was a way for me. It was a way for me to get traffic. And yeah. I wanted to, I want to be able to get traffic to my channel without having to quote unquote clout chase. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I found a way I can, you know, use my skills to kind of like, you know, break things down for people. You know what I mean? So I, it, I, lo it, I love doing them. They're fun. Okay. But I'm going to, I want to ask you some questions just for my own personal, just so I know. Yeah. 
is that considered clout chasing or not? I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> maybe I guess. I don't know. I think clout chasing is more like if I was like, you know, if it was more negative. The negativity is what like, makes it? Like, I think, ne- I think, I think, I don't know. Maybe I would agree. I can agree with that. Yeah. If, if it's like, if it's like, uh, you know, you're literally going after somebody negatively. Yeah. You know, I know I've done a couple of things on like Athlean X and I don't know if it's negative or not, but like some of the stuff he was putting out, I'm like, this is, this is actually ridiculous. Like, yeah, let's just, yeah. let's like, it, you know, you, you go to go, you go to like, one of the gyms and you see a trainer doing the most bogus shit. Yeah. And you're like, right. uh, and you want to type this person aside and be like, Hey, uh, that guy is no, <laughs> no clue he's talking about. I would probably not do that. So I kind of use, I, I, that's what I kind of look at it. Like, it's almost like that. So, yeah, but yeah, I like the videos. I've, I've actually watched a couple of them and, uh, it's actually really informative. Like you break down the exercises really, really well. And I think, for people, I think for people that don't, um, that are newer to training or even, even intermediates, I mean, you're given some really in-depth training and it's funny. I see a lot of, ch- a lot of channels out there. Actually, I see some channels out there that are like, you can do a bicep curl like this or like that. And there's like a thousand different bicep curls and they're all shit. And, yeah. then, and I watch your channel and it's, I don't want to say it's the basics, but it's actually more functional. Like it's actually more educational yeah. and not as much gimmick. It's it's like I get it from my, I uh, like I just mo- re- I only have like maybe like five clients that train a person left. Yeah. But for like before for the most part, I was probably one of the busier trainers here. Like I was doing forty five hours a week of in person training. Yeah. yeah. So I get a lot of my like cues from people, like you know, from different types of body types and yeah. personalities, and you know. And then trying to find a way to break it down to somebody so they know how to do it. Yeah. And then taking those cues and putting them into videos. And, and I found that those actually helped a lot of people. Like yeah. I got a better response than I thought I would get. Yeah. From it. Well, I, I like what you're doing. Cause I've noticed that, you know, people ask me if I coach and I'm like, I can actually help more people with the podcast than I can coach yeah. because I have various yeah. people on and those people give their information and, you know, people message yeah. me all the time about how much they're learning. And I feel like you got, you have to kind of feel the same way. You can only help so many people in person. Whereas in your channel, there's thousands yeah. and thousands of people watching you and learning how to do certain movements. Yeah. And if they want to hire, they hire and they hire you, but are you still doing coaching? Oh yeah. 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 Online for sure. Okay. Just like, just like the one-on-one stuff. I only have, like I said, five. Yeah. And I, that's even cut down to like two of them on vacation right now. And they're, you know, those are my, to all keep around probably forever because they're really good clients yeah yeah i mean i like it um i wanted to ask you so this weekend after the show what is the first meal that you are you a food guy or no yeah (laughs) yeah. i've already yes already already mess already message already message juan morrell i want (laughs) to see if i can get those cookies sent to the hotel have you had them before no and i I, I haven't either yeah, so I I'm literally gonna just get a ton of them and then bring them home because I'm like, I've seen them. I, I can't stand watching him eat them. <laughs> like I hate I hate the way he eat. Like when he eats them, I'm just like, you like like why stop they look, it? Because they look so he good. He just like he just breaks it open the right way and then like the way he eats it, he's like he was like, oh, now it's a party. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Like stop. Like what do you put in? 900 it's like 980 calories for one <laughs> i love i just want one i just want one i love one. that you're dieting just, you seem so angry about the cookie commercials <laughs> uh, it so, makes me so angry man <laughs> just eat just eat the fucking thing please yeah uh, uh no. what, one more question before i let you go man because i know this is like the last week for you and you got too much going on but the youtube channel i do this thing whole thing by myself and how much help is it to have, you know, an editor and all these people helping you? Like, a is lot. it, is it a big deal? Like, should I be getting people to help me with my channel? It was the best advice that I took way too long to take from Greg, literally. Like if you can pay someone to do that stuff, the more you can focus on doing other things. Yeah. But I don't have a lot of editing to do with the podcast, right? Like they're not even really edited. I just, kind of add an overlay and then it goes out so i don't really yeah but you can anything. do you, you can do more you can do more the time you're doing to edit you can do another podcast and have yeah. them already out 
Yeah. You know, you're like, it's like, it's not like, it's not like I do like a video and edit one every day. It's like we do a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. And then they're all done. And then, you know, you're always ahead of the game instead of like, oh, I got to do, I got to do a video. I got to do a video. Yeah. So if you have someone to edit, like the time you're spending editing, you can be doing another podcast. And the more people, like, people want to see, people love your, the podcast. Like, it's, yeah. it's not like it's, it's probably the biggest podcast in the industry easily. Thank you. So if you, you know, if you're putting out seven of those a week, no one's going to not watch it. And then you could take some of those and put them onto a uh, more place where dates has one on Spotify. Yeah, I have mine on Spotify. Yeah, there you go. I, yeah. iTunes, iTunes, and SoundCloud. So, I'm good. Yeah. That I'm good that way. I just, yeah, you you make a good point. I I've never really thought of having anybody do any of the extra work for me. Yeah, because you have some company too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not, pretty sure you got you got other things to do too. <laughs> I, got full, <laughs> I got a I got a full day. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Right? But I always like I've heard Greg say that before. You know, I have people working for me and I have this and I have that. And I'm like, and I think I've heard Derek say it from more plates, more dates too. And I'm like, it makes they, a big difference. I'm like, who do they have working for them? And what are they doing? Like, I don't, they have a lot of people like it. The, the more I get, the more I get into this, the more I realize how much more like, you know, the bigger channels have staff, like really, they're not, they're not doing themselves. We're, like I only started doing this. I saw the turnover immediately Yeah. when I started, when I hired help. So you literally have somebody doing like your thumbnail and then doing the editing yeah. and then doing like, so you're just the talent. Yeah. You're just the guy talking. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. No, I, I, I oversee a lot. Like, you know, when it comes to like, we all do a team effort when it comes to like thumbnails, like, so I'll get thumbnail back and, you know, it'll be like, let's change the word on this or that, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, you know, I do still have my hand, a lot of stuff, but I am primarily the actor. Yeah. Does somebody give you ideas for stuff or do you come up with your own ideas for the channel? Or we, we, both, we all do. Yeah. Okay. We, we all, we all come up with it, but eventually like, you know, eventually I, I want to have someone that just, just finds content. Yeah. The more, the more stuff I don't have to do, the more, the more I can just be in front of the camera, the more everything else starts to grow. Did you have trouble relinquishing control of certain things when you first hire people? Because I assume no. at the beginning of your channel, you were doing it all yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was more so just teaching because I, I hired, I hired some, like my brother is one of the editors and he's not a fitness guy at all. Yeah. And my other editor is from Portugal and he's not a fitness guy at all. He just, he happens to be following myself and Greg. Mm -hmm. So, and he's a videographer for um, weddings. So when we started, it's a different kind of editing. Yeah. So I had to basically coach them up on how the editing is going to go. And, you know, now they're rolling pretty easy with it. Yeah. So if you, you know, if you hire somebody that's like, I would just get, get, a, get, a, get a talent. I yeah. know how to put things together. And then, yeah. you know, you're, you say it in that way, right? Interesting. Um, Johnny, look, I appreciate you coming on. I know you're uh, a few days out and this prep has to be your hardest prep, right? Did you, you think it's easy? Hands down. I mean, Fuck, dropping 10 pounds of muscle? Hands down or, 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 or more? Yeah. That's insane, man. Look, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you on stage, man, especially after seeing some of your more recent um, pictures and videos. Appreciate but it. I'm excited to see you this weekend, man. And thank you for making a little bit of time for me for the podcast. Well, thanks for letting me come on. This is uh, one of the best podcasts there is. So, we'll, uh, um, we'll, do, we'll do another one when you're more energetic and you can teach people how to train. We'll do a, a more of a... Yeah. <laughs> more of a like a in-depth on how to yeah i'll be in windsor soon too so will you yeah yeah when you, see the family when are you coming down i think probably like two weeks probably closer to september or right beginning of september why don't you shoot me a message when you come down we'll uh we'll go you can come by my gym we'll fucking shoot a video and train down but Sorry. you're not are you still are you still super strong or no oh easy man of course well, no, because I'm not. So I don't want to train with anybody who's going to make me look bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but... Um, well, yeah, we can, we'll work. we can make it work for sure. All right. Give me a shot when That'd you get there. We'll, uh, we'll get something set up. Sounds good. All right, brother. Good luck this weekend. All right. Appreciate it. Okay, man. Take care. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.